everybody, it's The Walker. So what are we doing today? Well, today is the first hot tent outing of the season. The bottom dropped out of the temperatures. I don't think it's above 32 right now. It's going into maybe the low 20s tonight. Ordinarily deep winter, I'd smuff that off, but early season, I don't know why, but it tends to feel a little bit colder. Now, our main goal for uh, this outing is to test out some new kit I bought. I'm constantly on search for the perfect titanium fry pan. Here's the newest contender. So we'll give it a try for this outing. Then we'll do a full review later. These are on closeout. This is an X-Bed Dow Mat Light 5. LW, long wide. So these, I think I got this for like 75 bucks on closeout. Uh, the um, weight is around 29 ounces. It says here, R value 4.1. I think that'll probably take me down to 10 degrees. Of course, it'll also be on a closed cell pad. Save um, roughly I don't know, maybe uh, eight or 10 ounces off of my um, down mat seven long wide, but it's an increase of eight or so ounces over my down mat seven extra short. So we'll see how that goes. The star of the show, the toucan. Here, this is the, um, they call this the chimney tent. But I added a fiberglass. I believe this is the same material that's used by Kafaru Seek Outside, I think. So this is removable totally. But basically, the tent comes with. This little flap here and Velcro on the tent already. So I double sided sewed this stove jack so it'll stick on the one side of Velcro and then offer me the opportunity to stick on the other side. So it's double Velcro. One of those things you want to make sure of on a heated shelter, any flaps are secure well away from where a pipe could make contact. Looks just fine. There's vents here. They're covered. Huh, it's warmer in here just because of the uh, natural greenhouse effect. There's a vent, one vent. And then a second vent. So we'll see if that lets out some of the smoke, lets out um, some of the moisture, but I'm curious how much heat, if we lose any heat from that. I'll be curious about that. Now this particular model I got has two doors. And that's a big pro for heated shelter, two doors. Connectors are at a tie-off shock cord. Looks like heavy-duty shock cord. 
on a regular sewed in tie off. Some reinforcement there. This is going to leave a gap, but we'll be covering that gap over a little later. I could, I suppose, not use the shock cords, go directly down like that, but you know, the shock cords made it very easy to pitch the tent. Just kind of stretched right up. I can tie these doors back here. And we have uh, guidelines, we're gonna put those out too. Yeah, I'll run those. That's awesome. I can definitely see the pros. Processing wood, being able to drag it in. Just got it right there. Saw it inside the shelter, or easy in and out with the two doors. So that's kind of, um, glad I spent the extra, I don't know, they charged, it was like $12 extra for the door. Also, in case I don't have the pole, I want to tie it. This is always infinitely better than doing like that. But options are never a bad thing. There's a total of six of these.
Looks like really good wood. Might be a little wet down here. That is nice, very nice.
your stove pipe has a bolt, always put the nut on the inside. This way it won't um, damage the stove pipe, I mean the stove jack, when you go to install it. If you want um, one of these little bands for every foot of pipe, but there's no set, um, no real set rule on that. And if you have a collar, Something like that. I pull back the um, bands. So you tighten down on the collar. There we go. When making a stove jack, I always want the port a bit bigger than the pipe. The reason being, there's less chance of it getting hung up and tearing the stove jack material. Especially with these roll-up pipes, these edges, they can be pretty sharp. Also, tent materials, flaps that aren't fire resistant away from the pipe. So always check the angle of the pipe after it's installed. Just don't push it through and get the stove going without actually verifying everything is okay. This looks good.
That should trap some of the heat in. During deep winter, I'll carry a Mylar blanket for the door that I use and I just shove that Mylar up in the gap. I most definitely have the t-shirt weather. So I'm really liking that. Um, yeah, it's gotta be 95, 100 degrees in here, maybe more. I'm trying to run the stove slow a little bit. Um, the stove to um, shelter size ratio, whatever, whatever it's, um, it's a big stove. It's Seek Outside SXL. And this shelter is, it's a little roomy, but compared to like a lot of hot tents, it's not that big at all. So it really makes a um, nice little warm, warm shelter. We'll see how it works in deep winter. We got some real cranking cold. I think it's going to be maybe 21, 22 degrees tonight. That's not so bad. Okay, um, I guess we'll start cooking. Also, I still have to set up my bed too. I think this is um, I think some kind of Portuguese thing. Mmm. Pretty good.
Time to crawl in the sleeping bag. We'll see what tomorrow brings. Not too bad of a night. Just stay in a little bit more in the bag than get up, cook the sacred bacon. There's some condensation on my bag. Some of the walls. It's about what I'd expect from a single wall shelter. Also, November in New England, the ground's always wet, frozen. Part of the reason why I don't worry too much about the, um, I move them a little way up the stove, but I don't worry too much about leaves in the shelter or anything like that. Anything on the ground this time of year tends not to burn at all. I'll have to go to the, um, I have the food hung, so I'll go get the food. Get some wood. Let's see how the stove burned down during the night. Not bad, not bad at all. I'll tell you, between the airplanes and the gunfire, it sounds like uh, Normandy or something. Man. The new fry pan is doing a great job frying the sacred bacon. It looks about the same size as the Keith I reviewed, but maybe a bit shallower with a different 
handle. That's looking about done. Let's give the sake of bacon a try. Mm. This was a natural uncured bacon. I'm going to go with the uh, coffee. It's probably too hot. It's another, um, titanium does have some downsides. You have to be careful you burn your lips on it. Because it's so thin. Coffee's good, but, um, let that cool off for a little bit. Good. These seams are tape sealed. I'm still going to seal the outside with Silnet. Just in case. At the peak, there's a hook on what appears to be a tie-off. I'm not sure what it's for. Maybe it's to uh, hang something. That's my best guess, because I don't see any uh, clothesline, and that's unfortunate. Maybe a lantern or something. I need to break camp. I'm sure I've said it before, another video. If you have a hot tent, you definitely want to roll that door back and secure it when you go to remove a hot stove. The ashes are totally out. I dumped some water on them. Well, I'm not gonna lie, I pissed on them. And I'm all packed up. All right, that's the end of another venture. If you like what you've seen, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and as always, thanks for watching.